Hi everyone. How's it going today? I hope you're all doing well and feeling good. It's always a pleasure to have you with me on my channel. As usual, I will discuss some topics that you might like. I understand that the quality of this video might not be the best, but I hope that the content is still understandable and informative. If you're interested in learning more, I also have a Telegram channel where I share various information that I can't post here. And make sure to subscribe to my backup YouTube channel in case of unforeseen events. So, without further ado, fasten your pants and let's get started. The following is the first chapter of the new book by James Bovard, titled, Last Rites, The Death of American Liberty. Americans today have the freedom to be fleeced, groped, wiretapped, censored, ticketed, disarmed, beaten, vilified, detained, and maybe shot, by government agents. Politicians are hell-bent on protecting citizens against everything except Uncle Sam. Is America becoming a cage-keeper democracy where voters merely ratify the latest demolition of their rights and liberties? We live in a world in which everything has been criminalized, warned Supreme Court Justice, Neil Gorsuch. There are now more than 5,200 separate federal criminal offenses, a 36% increase since the 1990s, along with tens of thousands of state and local crimes. More laws mean more violators, who can be harshly punished on command, resulting in the arrests of more than 10 million Americans each year. Thanks to the Supreme Court, police can lock up anyone accused of even a very minor criminal offense, such as an unbuckled seatbelt. The Founding Fathers saw property rights as the guardian of every other right. But today's politicians never lack a pretext for plundering private citizens. Despite being charged with no crime, half a million Americans have been robbed by government agents on the nation's sidewalks, highways, and airports in recent decades. Federal law enforcement agencies arbitrarily confiscate more property from Americans each year than all the burglars steal nationwide. The IRS pilfered more cash from private bank accounts because of alleged paperwork errors than the total looted by bank robbers nationwide. Federal bureaucrats blocked landowners from farming or building on a hundred million acres of their own property because of puddles, ditches, or other suspected wet spots. Politicians are increasingly dividing Americans into two classes, those who work for a living, and those who vote for a living. Subsidy programs have multiplied even faster than congressional ethics scandals. Federal aid propelled college tuition increases that turned ex-students into a new debtor class, endlessly clamoring for relief. Farm subsidies wreak chaos in markets while providing a gravy train for affluent landowners. Federal mortgage policies have been wrecking ball benevolence, whipsawing the housing market, and spawning the 2007-2008 collapse that reduced the net worth of black and Hispanic households by 50%. The number of handout recipients has more than doubled since 1983, and the feds are now feeding more than 100 million Americans. Government grants are eventually followed by government restrictions, and dependence often turns into submission. The ultimate victim of handouts could be democracy itself. Politicians cannot undermine self-reliance without subverting self-government. While politicians boast of bestowing freebies, taxes have become a financial grim reaper. The Internal Revenue Service is Washington's ultimate sacred cow, because it delivers trillions of dollars to allow politicians to work miracles, or at least get re-elected. Americans are forced to pay more in taxes than their total spending on food, clothing, and housing. Tax codes have become inscrutable, at the same time the IRS pummels people with ten times more penalties than in earlier decades. The Biden administration is racing to hire 87,000 new IRS agents and employees to squeeze far more money out of both rich and poor taxpayers. Inflation has become the cruelest tax as the dollar's purchasing power fell 17% since Biden took office, fleecing any citizen with a savings account. Before I continue the video, please give a like if you learned something. Also, don't forget to subscribe and click the notification bell so you won't miss any update. Finally, watch until the end to avoid any misunderstanding. Thank you. Federal surveillance leaves no refuge for dissent. 
Government agencies are secretly accumulating mountains of data that could be used for blackmail, stalking, harassment and public shaming of American citizens, according to a 2023 federal report. The National Security Agency has stalked Americans via their cell phones, covertly installed spyware onto personal computers, and treated anyone searching the web for suspicious stuff like a terrorist suspect. The Patriot Act spurred the illegal seizure of personal and financial information from tens of millions of Americans. Customs agents can seize and copy the cell phones, laptop drives, and private papers of any American crossing the U.S. border. The Drug Enforcement Administration is building a secret nationwide network of license plate scanners to track every driver. Federally funded fusion centers are stockpiling suspicious activity reports on tourists who photograph landmarks, people who avoid eye contact, and anyone reverent of individual liberty. The FBI's terrorist warning signs include hotel guests using Do Not Disturb signs and the Gadsden Don't Tread on Me flag. At the same time spying on citizens skyrocketed, Washington dropped an iron curtain around itself. The government is committing more crimes than citizens will ever know. Whistleblowers and journalists are hounded, as if exposing official lies is a heresy against democracy. Every year, the federal government slaps a secret label on trillions of pages of information, enough to fill 20 million filing cabinets. Any document which is classified is treated like a holy relic that cannot be exposed without damning the nation. Self-government has been defined down to paying, obeying, and wearing a federal blindfold. There are plenty of laws to protect government secrets, but no law to protect democracy from federal secrecy. The First Amendment is becoming a historic relic. Federal Judge Terry Doughty recently condemned the Biden administration for potentially the most massive attack against free speech in United States history. That verdict was ratified in September 2023 by a federal appeals court ruling, slamming the White House and federal agencies for actions that resulted in suppressing millions of protected free speech postings by American citizens. Rather than the rule of law, we have a government of threats, intimidation, and browbeating. Government of the people, defaulted into government for the people, which degenerated into perennially punishing people for their own good. Elections are becoming demolition derbies that threaten to wreck the nation. Historian Henry Adams observed a century ago that politics has always been the systematic organization of hatreds. Nowadays, politics seems hell-bent on multiplying hatred. Enraged activists are increasingly tarring all their opponents as traitors. Many of the protesters who spent years vehemently denouncing Trump were not opposed to dictators per se, they simply wanted different dictates. More than half of Americans expect a civil war in the next few years, according to a recent survey. Americans are indoctrinated in public schools to presume that our national DNA guarantees that we will always be free. But few follies are more perilous than presuming that individual rights are safe in perpetuity. None of the arguments on why liberty is inevitable can explain why it is becoming an endangered species. Yet many people believe that liberty will inevitably triumph because of some law of history never enacted by God, a convocation of cardinals, or even the Arkansas state legislature. Presuming that freedom is our destiny lulls people against political predators. Federal judge learned hand warned in 1944. Liberty lies in the hearts of men and women, when it dies there, no constitution, no law, no court can save it. But Americans are more likely to encounter liberty in history books instead of their own lives. Many young people are unaware of bygone eras, when Americans could travel without being groped, buy a beer or smoke a cigar without committing a federal offense, or protest without being quarantined in an Orwellian free speech zone. Is the spirit of liberty dead? Almost a third of young American adults support installing mandatory government surveillance cameras in private homes to reduce domestic violence, abuse, and other illegal activity. We have an impunity democracy in which government officials pay no price for their crimes. Americans today are more likely to believe in witches, ghosts, and astrology than to trust the federal government. Washington's legitimacy is in tatters thanks to a long train of bipartisan perfidy. If government is lawless, elections merely designate the most dangerous criminals in the land. At a time when foreign democracies are collapsing like dominoes, can America avoid becoming the elective despotism the Founding Fathers dreaded? 
The first step to reviving liberty is to recognize how far politicians have stretched their power. But nothing can safeguard freedom except the bravery of citizens who refuse to be shackled. Now, it's time for me to hear from you. What are your thoughts on this video? If you found it interesting or informative, please consider giving it a thumbs up and sharing it with your friends and family. Remember, the more people know about these important topics, the better. Before we wrap up, I want to extend a huge thank you to all the individuals who dedicated their time and energy to research and gather the information presented in this video. Their efforts are truly commendable and have helped shed light on important topics that affect us all. Make sure to hit the subscribe button and turn on notifications to be notified when the next video is uploaded. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next one.